India's space story just hit a new orbit. ISRO Chairman V. Narayanan has confirmed that Chandrayaan-4, India's most complex lunar mission ever, has been approved for launch in 2028, marking a historic shift in India's deep space ambition. And that's not all. ISRO is about to enter its busiest, boldest and most consequential phase since the organization was founded. ISRO has seven more launches planned this financial year alone, including a commercial communication satellite, multiple PSLV and GSLV missions, and a milestone moment. The first PSLV fully built by Indian private industry. I believe this is India scaling like a superpower. So as global space economies prepare for a $1.8 trillion boom by 2035, India is positioning itself to be more than just a participant. It actually wants to be a contender. Narayanan confirmed what scientists have hinted for months. We are targeting 2028 for Chandrayaan 4, end quote. Unlike Chandrayaan 3's soft landing, Chandrayaan 4 will attempt a lunar sample return, a capability achieved only by the United States, Russia and China. If successful, India becomes the fourth nation in human history to bring back pieces of another world. This mission changes India's lunar status permanently. Alongside Chandrayaan-4, ISRO and JAXA of Japan are advancing LUPEX aimed at drilling into the lunar south pole to study water ice, the fuel, oxygen and life support resource that will power future moon bases. LUPEX is more than just a mission, it's a claim. A claim to the most valuable real estate in deep space. India currently builds a modest number of spacecraft annually. That era is over. Narayanan says ISRO will triple its spacecraft production in three years, shifting from a mission-driven agency to a high-throughput industrial powerhouse. Why, you ask? Because the demand is exploding. More satellites, more lunar missions, more deep space probes, more commercial launches, a booming private industry with 450 companies and 330 startups, up from just three a few years ago. India is quietly building a space manufacturing economy. The Indian Space Station, planned for 2035, just got very real. Narayanan says the first of five modules will launch by 2028. If executed as planned, India becomes the third major nation to operate its own space station after the United States and China. So, as the ISS retires and Tiangong ramps up, this positions India as a central node in the next era of human presence in space. A lot of confusion surrounded the Gaganyaan timeline. Narayanan clarified it. Uncrewed test shifted, but crewed mission remains 2027. Unchanged, three uncrewed flights will precede the astronaut launch. And then the big directive from the top. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has asked ISRO to send Indians to the moon and bring them back safely by 2040. India is now openly competing with NASA's, Artemis and China's 2030 lunar mission. The space race is officially a three-horse competition. Before India attempts another Mars mission, ISRO is very quietly solving the hardest problem in planetary robotics. How do you fly a drone on Mars with zero GPS? So, in a first-of-its-kind challenge, ISRO recreated a Mars-like terrain. Red soil, rocks, uneven slopes and asked university teams to fly an autonomous drone that must, well, do this. Identify three safe landing zones. Land on a 45 degree incline. Navigate only with vision, lidar, optical flow and onboard compute. Return home autonomously. No joystick, no manual override, no GPS. Just 
raw onboard intelligence. Wow, it's quite a mission. So what happened? Drones crashed, teams panicked, but only one team came close to completing the entire sequence. And the winners? They didn't use expensive NVIDIA Jetsons or RealSense cameras. They won using Raspberry Pi, uh, Pi plus rotating leader, proving that smart engineering can beat brute force hardware. But here's the interesting part. This challenge mirrors the exact constraints NASA faced with ingenuity on Mars. Limited payload, tiny compute, laser altimeters and simple optical flow navigation. ISRO is building the talent and algorithms that will power India's next Mars mission. This is the under the radar ecosystem that makes Chandrayaan, Lupex and future Mangalyaan upgrades possible. Right now, India holds 2% of the global space market worth $630 billion. Narayanan wants that number at 8% by 2030. That is $44 billion domestic space economy by, 2030, by 2033. India's bet is very simple. More launches, more satellites, more private players, more global contracts, more space manufacturing, more influence. This is industrial policy at orbital velocity. And in conclusion, ISRO is no longer operating like a traditional space agency. It's behaving like a fast-scaling technology company with national stakes. Seven launches in months, PSLV built entirely by Indian industry, tripling spacecraft production, Chandrayaan-4 sample return, Lupex water ice mission, Indian space station module in 2028, Gaganyaan crewed mission in 2027, crewed lunar landing by 2040, 330 plus space startups and counting. India, as we can see, is clearly claiming a seat at the high table of space-faring nations. The next decade belongs to countries that can build, launch, manufacture, and innovate at scale. And India has just declared it intends to be one of them. The only question now is, of course, will ISRO's industrial leap make India the world's next great superpower?